back, relax and maybe get yourself a snack Me and you gonna have a little chat about books Hi guys, so I'm here today with a special guest <laughs> Why are you laughing again? It'll carry on, it doesn't matter, does it? Would you like to introduce yourself to my YouTube channel? Because you've never been on here before uh, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm reading the news. <laughs> you don't need to do that. I'll just scare everyone. Hi guys. So today I am joined with a special guest. This is my mum. She's coming on my channel for the first time and she's a little bit scared, so be nice. <laughs> So I brought her onto my channel today, kind of inspired by Lauren from Lauren and the Books, so you can blame her for this. She does a series where she talks to various friends of hers and family members about books, and not all of them are as bookish as she is, but she likes having chats with them and sort of finding out a bit more about their reading tastes. So that's kind of what we're doing today. I asked on Twitter for questions from you guys, and I've got a list of them, so we're going to get started. Tell us a little bit about your reading tastes. How did you get into reading? How old were you when you got into reading? And what sort of books did you read when you were a child? My granddad and my dad both always read all the time and uh, I just got into the habit of reading anything and everything. The earliest books I remember reading were actually my parents' books from when they were children. So my dad had a book called uh, The Black Dog Mystery, which I looked up earlier today thinking about this question. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> And it dates from 1941, so it was obviously a book that my dad had when he was very young. I enjoyed that book and I read that a couple of times. It's a mystery, as in the title, Black Dog Mystery. It's a, a children's book, but it's quite well written. And a key part of that that stood out for me was actually when the boy in the story called Juna tracked down these... <laughs> you did so well! <laughs> The boy found a load of paintings in the woods and uh, the mystery ended up with people that had done the robbery that uh, mixed all the different coloured paints together to make a brown colour to repaint a car that they used for their getaway so that stuck in my mind. I used that in my art later on <laughs> knowing that all the colours, if you mix loads of colours together it comes out a sludge brown uh, paint mixing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well there you go. So, okay, what was your favourite one? when you were a child? If that was one um, of the first ones you read, what was yeah, your favourite childhood read, Well, I read book? that one a couple of times. I did like Enid Blyton when I was quite young. The mystery stories from featuring Fatty and all those other non-PC. Non when I was about seven, I read through the school library and just anything and everything. I, once I liked something like everyone, I suppose, once you like a particular author, then you tend to read all the other things they've written. Do you remember being told on parents night one time that I had read Above My Age by Mrs Marriott and she was very concerned that I was reading books that were above my age? <laughs> well I did the same so. Yeah, so you weren't concerned? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> this is one of the questions Twitter asked. What does your mum think about your YouTube channel and what it is and what you do? I don't get very involved in it, as you know. It seems to be quite an obsession and you seem to quite enjoy it. So it's good to have a passion for something, so it might as well be books. So. Speaking of passions then, shared interests that we have. Arty things, I suppose, if you're surrounded by art, given lots of art materials. <laughs> Leaving the childhood behind, what do you like to read now? I don't read very often, but I'm trying to read a little bit more Big time. Some stained glass books about stained glass artists. I've just started an Annie Prue book, which she's one of my favourite authors and I have read most you can of hold her, it up. her books. This is her latest one, which has been long awaited by me. Very small amount of the way through it, but it starts in 1700s through the centuries, so I'm looking forward to reading that. What would you say are your three favourite books? I did enjoy The Lord of the Rings when I was young, so I read that when I was 10. And I did reread that when I was 30. So I suppose they are fantasy books. True. Louis Comfort Tiffany or his company, but um, nicely with a ruler stuck in it for reference. Terrible bookmark. <laughs> Do you want to explain why you keep talking about stained glass? Um. So I'm, that might give a little bit I do, of context. I do stained glass. A, My mum is a stained glass artist. I do stained glass. Um, <laughs> she has a company called Orchid Stained Glass, yes. which I will put a link to down below. And you can go and check out what she does there because she does sort of contemporary 
stained glass pieces inspired by Tiffany. Tiffany, yeah. Uh, but is. not the same. So now you can continue right, your book so pitch. <laughs> I got this book because Tiffany came from the very famous family and Tiffany & Co is well known around the world. His father set up the business originally in the mid 1800s. He was a rich young man and was able to travel the world and pick up lots of influences from the east and invent a new type of glass called, which he called Favril, um, which is like an iridized effect stained glass. Changed the way stained glass was produced from windows and blocking out half the light as in medieval times and um, used glass to actually paint the picture. But this book that I just showed you earlier is all about Clara Driscoll and the Tiffany girls who um, worked in Tiffany's studios. When you make something out of stained glass quite often you have lots of tiny pieces left over that are off cuts and were often thrown away. Industrial scale they didn't want to throw away all the materials. Used tiny pieces and constructed lampshades so you might have heard of Tiffany lampshades. But, uh... If you live in this house you've definitely heard of <laughs> Tiffany lampshades. So the copper foil technique they use is a technique that I also use today but although the technique hasn't really changed I try and do something a bit funkier with the designs that I do. So it's actually his studio of ladies who actually did all the hard work and they did a lot of the designs as well. Definitely a non-fiction book but, but very interesting. It bigs up the ladies who did all the work. So that was very interesting for me to read about that because I loved it. If you can love a non-fiction book. Yeah, you can love non-fiction books. <laughs> and there's lots of really nice pictures in it. So, so this is a uh, copper foil lamp and it's also they also did uh, like a mosaic effect on the bases as well and they had all the bases designed specifically they had a glass studio they also had metal workers and all the different artisans available to make all the different bits next one moving along uh here's another stained glass artist slightly after tiffany so lots of photographs of his work um he's an irish stained glass artist and uh, he pushed the boundaries by using all sorts of fine techniques because he was a a draftsman and a calligrapher. Although he did a lot of very traditional style designs, uh, this is in the sort of 19, early 1900s, 1910, 20, 30. I really like his pieces, so um, there's big demand for stained glass in religious buildings and has been for many centuries and even to this day. A large part of his work was <laughs> secular buildings and that's what I like the most because he could do characters that were very fine drawn and he uses very uh, acid etching and interesting techniques to somebody that works with glass. Mm. Coming up to more present day in stained glass artists, which I'm sure <laughs> is boring everybody stupid by now. Judith Shacher, don't know how you pronounce her name. She's an American uh, stained glass artist. So. <laughs> <laughs> I will hold it up. She does some very disturbing. I'm holding oh, it sorry. for them, <laughs> not for you. <laughs> They're the ones watching. <laughs> Furious figures um, that look like they were in distress. Uh, I just like the juxtaposition just like of twisted the twisted figures. Well, creepy, disturbing. They're, they're thought provoking. Thought provoking figures. And this book's um, up to two thousand and four, so she's still working. She's in her late mid fifties, I think now. But this is in a good page, which shows all the different layering techniques she uses to build up the pictures. So huge amount of work. So from my point of view, that's just really interesting. She also uses the copper foil technique. So she fires different layers of glass and then fits them all together using a, a ring of copper foil around the outside. So when you look at her, one of her windows flat on the table, they they can be quite thick. It's not very in interesting <laughs> to anybody, but is interesting to me. And again, what would you rate those last two? Five stars all easily, round. Easily impressed. <laughs> okay, what one book would you recommend everyone read? Be an Annie Prue one would be um, The Shipping News, which has also been made into a film. Final question, where can people find you? Orchidstainglass.co.uk. I'm on Instagram, Orchidstainglass, and Twitter, Orchidstglass. So if you want to go and check out some of Mum's creations of stained glass, which are a little bit more modern than ones we've been showing you and definitely not religious, um, go and check them out. I will put links to them below. I'll also put some pictures of the work she's done on the screen, so you'll see some of that as well. And hopefully you can go and check out her website. This has been <laughs> Stained Glass Chats with Mum. <laughs> Thank you for coming on my channel. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully you've learned something about stained glass that maybe you never knew before. If you have any other videos that you'd like me to film with mum now that she's finally agreed to come <laughs> on the channel, let me know and I will definitely see if I can get her back. Bye guys. <laughs> Get that staying in. <laughs>
Thank you all for watching and we will see you next time in my next video. Bye! Bye! -bye. <laughs> you idiot. Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again.